that on YouTube. So. Yeah. Right. You can talk all you want. That's one of the ones here who sees it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Your coach is That's right. Oh, my gosh. You get over things and move ahead. Yeah. Because, baby. Sorry about that. She's wild. She's. What's your girls' name? The only one. Riley. I told her to vote yesterday. Well. I know, but I couldn't believe it. She sent me to the And Emmys, too. And then they're both. And then they can be for their own personalities. So they're. You wait till they get older. I'll tell you one thing there's a bunch of good boys at my grandson's age. Both boys and grandkids. There's a whole bunch of good boys down here to hang out here. Yeah. I was like that when I could be eight. Yeah. Well, I was driving Debbie up today. I saw Anthony going in your driveway. Yeah. On what? On what? <laughs> on a bicycle. And when I saw him, I did tell him and I said, I'm not going to see you on a bicycle. And he said, I saw him go, so he's crazy. He just looked at me and smiled. Did they make you sit in the end by yourself? What's that? Did they make you sit on the end by yourself? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got all the signed seats? Yep. Sorry. Where's your name tag? <laughs> Uh, they're they're unwilling to send them over. They usually do it in Cumberland, huh? They're still doing it. Unwilling to send them over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell Bill. 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 i will tell i will i where was that? That's what we said. I could find. No, thank you for looking. You live the closest. No, I wasn't. <laughs> she was camped out in her other home. <laughs> yeah. I was making coffee. So the past house she had. Yeah, so the road so. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Um, okay, so this is not a real meeting. So I know not a, I don't think it's not a real meeting. This is a meeting of the board of selectmen. So I know what it is. So um, I'm going to call the meeting to order, but um, unless something somebody has something really pressing. Um, I was going to bypass public comment. Is there somebody that has something that's important? Yeah. Not important, but time critical. So I want okay. to make a quick two things. One, um, I'm sampling the school well for forever chemicals, which is required by the state of Maine. And I, I had a conversation with Lisa. because she suggested I send you an email, but I didn't turn around. So I'm, I'm suggesting that you consider sampling the uh, Public safety building at the same time. And the cost is about $400. And it is recommended, you know, the state has recommended the fire department to sample their supplies, but it's not, a, it's not a requirement. But since I'm doing the school well, um, I'd recommend to do that. And if there's, you know, not likely there's going to be an issue, but it would be kind of nice to know. So uh, that's my, so when I do the school well, which will be in the next couple of weeks, I could just grab a sample of the public safety building also. That's one thing, and I don't need to know tonight. Just wanted to get that to you, and then because I just haven't gotten around to the memo. Then the second thing, again, not critical. Um, I've been working with the Island Institute and MLS in particular on sort of some energy initiatives, and one of the things that she's been recommending is uh, should be considered participating in this. Bringing in with me, but it's a Partner of Energy Rural Energy Initiative Program. Islesboro and actually the town of Eastport have both participated historically. And it's a program to provide technical services. It's not a grant program, it's not a grant fund program. It's a technical services, technical assistance program to explore energy related topics. And since the, there's a group, the CPC, working on 
charging stations on the mainland side. And we've had some discussions in the community about what station and transportation on the island side. It seems like it'd be a good opportunity to maybe apply for that and see if we could get some kind of planning services by the large uh, you know, research labs and some of the smaller organizations that work on energy um, grids. So for example, if we want to electrify transportation here, we need to evaluate whether our electrical system can handle it, and if not, we'll kind of upgrade to the Okay, that's one. Uh, Carol, is that something that CTC could do directly, or is it something that we have to apply for? Well, the what, what the island is to recommend it is that, that the town apply and CTC become, be a partner and send a letter of support so that we work together on it. And we don't necessarily have to work, you know, simultaneously together, but I think given the fact that there's that initiative, the time is good. So if they felt the application would be better coming from the municipality than just CTC, you know. And so uh, when is this due? Through April 15th. The application is pretty, I, you know, it's pretty basic. It's not too complex. Um, so. Okay. So um, I think we should handle both of those right now because we've got a huge agenda for the next meeting. Yeah. If that's okay with you. Um, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the town administrator to have the well water tested at the public safety town building uh, up to four hundred dollars. Is that enough? That's, I would say up to five hundred dollars. Yeah, let's say five hundred. Up to five hundred dollars to be taken out of selections contingency account. Number. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. Any discussion on that? Jay? Is that for PFMAs and PFOS? PFAS, yeah. So for all the performing Four or five hundred bucks for two places? That's cheap. Well, yeah. And then that's just like spend a lot more. Right. That's what it is right now with two. Take it from Yeah. Yeah, is this part of that program where they've been fighting all the schools that had all the issues? That's a lead thing. Wow. We are, I'm also testing the school for lead. So okay. The lead, it's not lead, it's just for chlorinated compounds, which are associated with the firefighting foam and firefighting operations and clothing. So I just think it would be, uh, they're recommending um, fire department tests. So while I'm doing it. So will you be testing for like E. coli? And no, just, just. Fast okay. But I mean, I don't think I, I you know, you can test the E. I'm happy to grab an E. coli sample. That's 10 bucks mm -hmm. if you want. But you know, no, I just didn't know. I, you know, I no. just wasn't sure exactly what you just, tested for. Just these synthetic forever compounds. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody on the board have another question? Mayor. May I ask her a question sure. regarding the PFAS? So I think I read that. Sludge was related to the forever penalty. So I know back in the 80s, people brought sludge over from Ghana. I know Cynthia brought it over. They used it as heaven forbid fertilizer. Is it worth testing any of our streets that are running right now? It would be, I would recommend that you test your. So Mr. Bing is not listed as. There are no properties on Tribune that have been listed as sludge sites, but we know those of us who are involved in the baseball field, we did bring sludge over for the baseball field. So that's why I'm kind of compelled. I mean, I'm interested in testing the school well. But if there are other people that are concerned, the DEP does have a program where they'll provide financial assistance. It's kind of strange. You can test. If your test comes up positive, then they'll reimburse you. That's how it works. Otherwise, I fear I have to drive it to New Hampshire and pay four hundred dollars down here. Well, no, you can. I mean, I'd be happy to grab the sample. You don't have to go to New Hampshire, but I mean, I think the way the state program works, they'll reimburse you if you find something, which is kind of strange. Yeah, but that's it's not really encouraging people. <laughs> no. no. Well, and some of the farmers are very now they're quite nervous about testing on the state. Right, because if once they have determined, then they're in trouble. So if there are properties where people did put sludge down that aren't on the state list, I mean, they, it wouldn't be a bad idea to test. The school did take a little bit of sludge on the baseball field. I'm not expecting that that's a problem, but we, we need to test anyway. 
Yeah. Is there anyone else in the audience or is there anybody who has a question about this? Anybody else on the board? Okay. All in favor? Okay, unanimous. Great. Um, and so the other question, and I just assume that do cover this too, is this rural energy. Um, so do we want to apply for this um, program? Yeah. Who would be in charge of it? I guess that's the, okay, yeah. So if somebody want to make a motion, then we'll talk about it. Make a motion to authorize the town minister to apply for a technical services assistance program for the Department of Energy. Is that good? Second. Okay, so we can second it. So my question is um, how, like, how long is this application? You mean the physical application? Yeah. It's like four pages. And what I could do is prepare the application, <coughs> input from the CCC group, and then you guys could review it. It's not, there's no money involved. You don't have to come up with a budget. Yeah, no, I don't know who is going to do it. And then right. who administers it? What happens once we get it? it I, I would be happy to take the lead and work with whoever the, the community is interested. Some communities have energy committees. We don't have one. I don't think we need to make one. I think it's really, and some like Osbar sort of changed the orientation of what they wanted to do once they talked to some of the experts. So I think it's really just an opportunity to get some advice on energy. Uh, it's really trying to reduce the amount of, you know, amount of carbon generating energy that you're using. So it can be almost, you know, it can go any direction. But like one community, it's, it's meant for rural, remote, and island communities. The island is included behind this grant program. And there was one community who did pursue electrification of this parish system. So I think for us, we're not necessarily there yet, but I do think that trans the electrification of transportation is kind of a growing interest. So, and so then you would get in touch with John and he's not in touch. <laughs> and that's and that's and that's and that's okay, I'm asking you. Well, so, and I've been talking to Loader and uh, Ernest, right. you know, those are the two guys I've been talking to. Okay, but then I think the one on the CTC. So you guys would write a letter. Yeah, yeah that's what we need from them. Um, so, so the question for Carol, I guess, CTC is currently focused on the need for electric car charging stations in the parking lots. And so this would apply there too? I think so because it's part of our transportation Part system. of our community and that's needs. And that's where where I think, you know, since that's a kind of a current ongoing effort, I think we could ask yeah. to get some help yeah. with that. Yeah, and Donna, we have a, the CTC has a parking committee and Richard Hackle and Chris Loder and Bob Ernest are part of that committee because oh, okay. they're very interested in electric vehicles. Okay, great. All right, anyone else have any questions about this um, grant, energy grant? application of whatever it is. Yeah. This is going to drift a little bit off the subject of kind of not much. With respect to the Blanchard parking lot on Cousins Island, if, if we look into um, charging stations in that parking lot, I think a serious discussion might have to take place with DOT about the existing elevation of that lot, <laughs> given the storms and sea level where I thought to go. Exactly, and that's where these folks come in because they're kind of heavy with in the national labs to deal with that kind of stuff. Yeah. So Thank then you. we don't have to hire somebody to kind of evaluate that. Yep. It's like free consulting. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Carol. Can I ask a clarifying question? Uh, Mark, you made a motion to authorize the town administrator to apply for the program. Carol offered to do the writing. Do you really want to see it, or do you just want once it's done, submit? Well, I think you need to see it. Well, no, I guess, but she had mentioned about how she would, you know, fill it out and then would well, yeah, send it to you I, to see I, I it. I think still out, you could email it to the board. I mean, we had the fourteenth, but we can definitely do that. And I, it well, would, I hope it wouldn't be the fourteenth. Well, I don't know. I'm doing the best I can, but I mean, and it would. I think Vika would be 
designated as the kind yeah. of you know talent that that's the only reason I included yeah it. well and, I mean because I know you guys authorized me to apply for like the Shore and Harbor grant I've been working for it here but you haven't seen any of it so I just want to make sure that that's what okay. you're authorizing or you want for well, I'll, I'll make sure you see it she would be the person who would sign it yeah I'll, and I'll, 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 I'll work with you and you can work with that okay that's okay. great Sure. <laughs> Carol, I'd be interested in talking with you sort of as soon as possible to see kind of where, where we're at, because I think we, CPC may be working on things um, parallel. To, right, to and this. that's what I found out because I had already pursued this. So that's why when I talked to Bob and Loader, so we can take that. Okay, yeah, you guys can get together and talk about that. That's great. Okay, so the, um, anyone else have anything? So um, the reason that we call this meeting is to consider possible projects for application to the Congressional Directed Spending Program, Congressional Funding Program, and authorize the filing of an application or applications on behalf of the town. So just to give some background information on this, uh, Kim Hamilton reached out to me about a month ago, two or three weeks ago, and then she reached out to the whole board once uh, the applications had actually uh, been uh, uh, publicized. And Jen and I met with her last week and um, to learn more about this program. Last year, you may remember that um, the uh, Congress created a program that was kind of the stepchild of the earmark program, where uh, various in the past, various congressmen and senators would um, earmark something and, you know, they talked about pork belly and all that kind of stuff. And so it was thrown out because eventually, because people just felt it wasn't a fair process. So Congress came up with a process and uh, last year, I actually sat in on a webinar that the Island Institute sponsored that had um, information about how all of this works and, uh, and what the purpose is. And I'm just going to kind of go over a little bit of this. Um, so what happens is that you submit an application for a project, staff reviews it, they recommend which ones to go forward. And um, I've talked to people in all three con uh, uh, congressional um, uh, offices, and um, Susan Collins' office said that it was really an advantage to actually send the same project to all three of them because they get on different lists and they all confer in the end on which ones go in. And she said the issue, is, part of the issue is because Susan Collins is the senior member of the Appropriations Committee in the Senate, that she has, um, you know, well, right, that's a good way to put it. And Sally Kimberly's on the Appropriations Committee in the um, House, and she's not the senior member like Susan is, but she also gets called. And so uh, and I kind of questioned it. But Kim had told us that something was to the same effect. And so anyway, um, that was the advice that we were given. Um, so um, the way it worked last year was that each member of Congress got 10 projects that they could put forward or would be 10 projects would be funded. Well, the bottom line is in Maine last year, they had over 90 projects that were funded. And so for various amounts from 100,000 to multiple millions of dollars. And so that was one reason that Kim got in touch with us. And the, all of the offices that I talked to said that they really like geographic and demographic diversity. And, and so, it, and they also, as I said, um, encourage us to apply to all three. Each one of them has a different application and each one of them has a different deadline. I made copies of, uh, it just happened to be the last one I was looking at for everybody um, on the board. <laughs> And um, just so you get an idea of what they look like, I have Susan Collins here too. Um, 
uh, didn't bother to keep on turning these knobs. I mean, a lot of it's exactly the same, but some of it's a little bit different. So, um, anyway, just to that's just so you have something to look at. So the scope of this is governments and nonprofits. Um, and the idea is to benefit as many people as you can to actually serve a need in, in communities. And they like letters of support, collaborations with multiple stakeholders. And um, as I said, the staff is very helpful and encouraging. And today I got uh, correspondence from two different offices of people that I've talked to over time. And Shelly Pinkley, um, the, who worked for Shelly Pinkley, talking about this. And um, I've got a call tomorrow with one of them who, yeah, I mean, they're willing to really help us do this. Um, so when we were at the meeting, we kind of throw a few ideas. And so as um, we went, forward and as I kind of went forward on my own and this is just what I've done um, and where I'm coming from on this because this is a very fast turnaround and these, these aren't easy applications so it takes time. So I asked, I talked to all of them about these projects. First one I talked about was the Stonewall and basically we all decided, I mean the person I talked to to each office and uh, decided we're not ready to apply for that, but next year we might be. And they told me that because of the scope of the project, that we might be able to qualify for anywhere from three to four million dollars. And it could be up to um, or up to 75% of the actual cost. I mean, they don't make guarantees, but you know, they're just basing it on what they've done in the past. So that would that that particular one would have a match. I mean, the more you ask for, the more you have to match. There's no question about that. Um, I do have a call in to find out how much you have to match for smaller projects. <clears throat> they basically said that some of them you don't have to match at all, depending on what it is. Um, the next one that I um, looked at or I asked them about was the electric buses for CTC and charging stations. And they told me about a new program that's about to be announced in Augusta. And then, so I forwarded that information to Matt. And um, I don't know where they are in that, but uh, that would be our project, but we could be a partner with it. The next one was the Stone Wharf Road. And the problem is we don't have a plan yet. So I reached out to TV in Maha last week. I got a message back that the person who was in charge of it was out until Tuesday. I got reached out again and I had not, I still had not heard back at the end of today, just before I left, I checked again. Um, so we're not at the point where we're ready to apply for something there. Um, unless he comes up with something in the next 24 hours. Um, the fourth one was the 80 foot ramp at Cousin Island. And I think you'll all remember a year or two ago, um, the board authorized me to get an estimate from Byron Baker. At that time, he was working on a project for Yarmouth, and he didn't want to co-mingle the two things because of um, you know issues that Yarmouth had. Then I talked to Matt Matt Tupper at the, around the same time, and he said it wasn't a problem. So anyway, we've had conversations back and forth, and before. That we reached out to him, we had a rough drawing from the flow people. I can't remember what custom floor, I guess they call it. Um, but we had real, really no plan or budget. And so, you know, a couple of times I followed up with Bonnie, I knew he was working on it. Mark had, I had also followed up. And so, when I reached out to TV Mahar, I also reached out to Bonnie. And today I received um, a pretty detailed. Um, Proposal from him, from uh, the engineering company with a, uh, a draft agreement. And so I'm going to pass those out in a minute. Um, and right now, considering that you have to have some kind of a project that's pretty much ready, that seems to be if we're willing to do this, that's the only really viable project that we have. Unless somebody else has got a lot more information about something than. Um, and was able to find more out about the road than I was able to. Um, and so, if in fact, um, 
if we want to benefit from this financial opportunity, we need to start working on the Collins application right now. And I'm willing to work on a draft that could be approved by next Wednesday's meeting, her deadline next Friday. Um, the staff members, as I said, seem really willing to help. And um, because we're asking for a relatively small amount of money, um, you know, I think that we will match would be minimal or probably or maybe nothing. Um, the contact people if people are interested are Mark Winter at Collins, Scott Williams at King, and Sarah Lawrence at Finger. If we apply, there is no guarantee that we'll receive a grant. But if we don't apply, it is guaranteed that we will not receive a grant. So <laughs> if anybody's interested, <laughs> no. um, so I, I guess the upside of this project is that wheelchairs can be used at all times. And if I'm wrong with that, that can correct me. Um, access at low tide would be much safer, especially when it's icy or rough. And a larger float would provide more kayak space. If we don't get funding, it will be rolled into the Stone Wharf project and we'll, we may have to pay a significant percentage of that cost. So that's that's my thought. And I'm happy to pay you out to you that I just got these so a little while ago. So I'm sorry that we haven't had time to really look at them. And there's three, I think, at least three different scenarios that are here. And this is the kind of thing where we have to make these decisions about a about anything because we can apply for something and not and just not accept it if we don't want. I mean, we decide we're not going to do it. But this is where we are right now. Um, and so there, and you'll see as you go through there's some scenarios of different things that will, different ways this could uh, work. Matt, do you want to look at the next slide? I don't know how to come. So I have a question for you. Yeah. I assume that these type of grants are mostly for funding projects that are ready to go and don't um, apply to any designer engineering um, costs. No. Right. Because we're going to have some more design and engineering. Yeah, no, these are, these are not the design and engineering. They're for real projects. Yeah. I thought that's what vinyl was for design. Pardon me? I thought vinyl havens funding was for design. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Why can't we put it in the uh, in the actual design? Well, oh no, the design is part of the project. It's like it's like a project with a design. I mean, that's part of this proposal. Okay. I think Carol meant like a concept plan to if you were going to do something, but not actually to follow through. Because I asked him that question about the solar one. And that's why they said that we should wait until we're ready to do it. Because the other thing they said was, if you apply for the Stone Wharf this year and you got a grant to do the design, we're probably not going to fund you next year. But if you apply for, uh, you know, you wait until you get the whole project. I mean, this is what all I know is what they said when I talked to them. Uh, I can't remember if that was Collins person or Henry's person. But anyway, it's up to you guys, whatever you want to do. So essentially, if I heard you right, uh, basically this grant is just for shovel ready. Uh, well, that's, that was my interpretation. Now, Carol may know something completely different than what I asked. But um, all I know is, you know, finally we'll apply for, you know, find the resiliency suitable route. I thought it was planning. I don't think they have a specific project, particularly the sewage treatment plant. So I don't know how far down the design track they have gone. Yeah, I don't know. Well, design. you have to have some kind of a number. That's what they're telling you. you right. Have a number that you can stand behind and you get documentation for. Right. And we don't have documentation for anything other than this. So that's, I tried. But I mean, this is a quick turnaround. I mean, when did we meet with her last week, Jen? Was it Thursday or Wednesday? 
Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's the problem. And I'm sorry, when is the deadline, April? The first deadline for Susan Collins is um, a week from Friday. Yeah, at least from next Friday. And then the um, other one. So the likelihood of getting a plan back from Phoebe Mahar and discussing it. I, well, you never know, but for so it, more for So yeah. with Stevie and Mahar, I've been in contact with them trying to get an update since it's been a month since you made a decision about what you wanted to proceed with. And I heard back this afternoon that the contact person and the person who's been working on the project, the email that I gave you, that person is no longer with the company. And we can put to somebody else to finish that project. Oh, um, that's so, why. But, okay, that's why they did. They basically said out of the office till Tuesday. <laughs> well, I say I was emailing him every week trying to get an oh update, and I hadn't heard back for two consecutive weeks. And I emailed last week, didn't hear, hear back. Emailed today, came back undeliverable. So I called the office and. So Thank you. There that. might be a little delay now in that project. Oh my gosh. I, have to drive on the I mean, I was so hopeful that maybe here. tomorrow the guy, I thought his guy had been on vacation and he was just catching But they did do a lot. So I don't think there was a whole lot to be done. Yeah. There would be more to be done if you wanted a grace. So I think it is pretty well finalized. So I'm hopeful that hopefully we can get a later. Yeah. All right. Well, that's where that goes. So anyway, I don't know uh, what you want to do, but uh, if we're going to do something, the way I've written the agenda, the draft agenda, which I think I already sent to Chris, but she probably didn't even see it. But I, you know, to consider um, authorizing, you know, to consider applying for the grant, because I think that with these federal grants, it's good that you have documentation that, you know, that you, so yeah. we just don't apply for it. Without a formal approval. Okay. And if I may, yeah. this, this might be a far reaching question, too. I'm not assuming that the Building Facilities Committee will be ready to make a recommendation to the community anytime soon. But if they were getting close with that type of project, it would. In fact, Jen and I talked about that. And um, I think that Jen and I might have to speak for her, she speak for herself. But um, that they weren't quite, they weren't really ready yet. I understand. They, did they finally take an architect? Yeah, yeah. but they don't, that's as far as they've gotten, I think. Oh, well, you're on that team too. Yeah. So, anyway, so what do you guys want to do? Got a chance. I just want to read what um, Lionel Haven got last year, um, or this year, I should say. So they got one million four hundred and ten thousand, and it the project is a Vinyl Haven downtown project includes construction of infrastructure, roadway, cross uh, sidewalks, crosswalks, parking, boat launch, storm water drainage, sewer, and water main. The project has four integrated components to build community resilience by providing critical protection and support for Vinyl Haven's economy through enhanced utility capabilities, increased public access and safety, and accommodation for growing concerns of flooding due to increased precipitation and rising sea levels. As identified in a 2015 study commissioned by the town from Ransom Engineers, which showed much of the project area would be inundated by a 100-year event coastal flood. Final Haven is requesting funds to support only SAG eligibility project components of the downtown project. These are upgraded stormwater infrastructure and improved public utilities. So the town approved to do the project, say, stormwater. They approved the uh, go for a uh, bond for X amount of money. Can we apply for this grant and pull that bond? Or, or pull that I they won't do bonds. They'll, they'll, what they would do is to do a grant and you wouldn't have to bond as much money. But if we already out that bond. 
Well, then I think you'd be elderly. I asked that question the lawyer because that particular question came up with the bond and discussion and grant money did not cover an existing bond or a bond in any form. Okay. But by the time this time next year, we'll have a better handle. We won't have bonded anything and we'll have a better handle on where we are with this going on. That was kind of the as I, you know, they were really hopeful. I mean, they really chatted it up, you know, and asked me questions and stuff. And that's why they felt like, you know, that would be, I mean, they really thought if we could do the, you know, the road, that would, that sounds like that would go. You know, or any of these would work because they're all integrated in that other project. And it showed what they said was, whether it was the road or the cousins, I don't think it's all part of the same infrastructure. And so this is like the beginning of something and they could pop it off. But, you know, that somebody's got to, you know, follow that. And, uh, you know, when Congress works, they can have a whole different program by next year. The fact that they don't all have the exact same um, application and date, I think, is an example of how government doesn't work in the world. Okay. Uh, listening to what you had to say about your conversations with uh, some of those folks, it strikes me that if we want to apply for one of these, applying for one in 2023 makes a lot more sense. We'd have ready projects, we would have projects that we could put together as a whole, as in the stone wharf, the golf club parking, and the road, somewhat road. That we'd be able to present a whole larger project. And we won't have worn out our welcome to some small, somewhat inconsequential well, piece they, of work. And that way, um, you know, A, we, we would have all our ducks in a row, in, in a row lined up. And we'd have an entirety of the project as opposed to bits and pieces. And clearly, we don't have anything. I'm trying to chance to Barney Baker's plan in the next 10 days. That can make any sense to me. Um, you know, let's go in prepared. Let's not look like a bunch of people trying to grab whatever they can get. Let's present a whole plan and something that's coherent and cohesive. But what she, her recommendation to me was apply for one of these smaller plans, show that we can do something, show that we can follow through, and then. We're in a good position for a bigger thing. I'm, I'm just saying, because I asked her, I said, Are you in a disadvantage? And she said, No. I mean, it's, so it's up to, you know, if you guys want to just not take advantage of doing this, I don't see a downside. I just, I guess I just don't see the downside. All right. Um, we, we've met with you, Norma at least once about this concept. I think you and I back then did. We talked to them once. We got a sketch from it's a sketch from Custom Floats, Scott Dyer. Not tougher the town manager is very aware that we're interested in considering some sort of a modification over there. We've asked Baker Associates to give us a possible design. And he's got different configurations, but I think figure five, which shows a bump out on the end of that wharf as you're walking down on the right, and that's a long ramp shooting down another ramp, similar to locations in now, push the boat out into deeper water. That'd be another benefit if that happens, by the way. Um, it gets pretty low over there at times, you know, especially when they're backing out. Um, this will have to go to town of Yarmouth, obviously. This will probably have to go to the town of Yarmouth planning board, most likely. Uh, will it be okay? I don't know. Does this community want it? Probably, but I don't really know the cost of the community on that, on that part of it. The ramp over there right now is about 41 feet long, 42, so it would be a ramp twice as long as, 
as once they're now good news, bad news. Um, does get steep on a low ground. Pretty steep. And I can't say that it wouldn't be beneficial for older people, people with disabilities, have trouble walking. I can't see how it wouldn't make it easier for rescue calls as well. Um, myself. So I think we should seriously consider putting in for you know, this money, which is 350 or 400,000, is what we've got down here right now for a number. Um, and if we need to discuss it more, we can discuss it more and, as a community. Like Donna said, we can apply. And if we change our mind or run into a roadblock with Yarmouth, then we can regroup. But I think it's foolish not to look at some sort of an upgrade. I guess one, one question I would have over there is, is that water going to be affected by sea level rise at some point? And probably the answer is yes. And I don't, I'm not expecting to solve that tonight. <laughs> I'm talking about a possible grant. But, um, if it's going to be affected by sea level rise, then it's got to be addressed by the town of Yarmouth in conjunction with the town of Shabig working with it. Um, you know, there is, if you put in a long ramp, it does make it more ADA friendly too. And that's not a terrible thing. There will also be a wider ramp, which will not be another terrible thing. So I don't see a lot of downside to this. I have not talked to Matt Tupper myself. I don't know. I did hear. Yeah. Um, I'm under the understanding they have done a structural report on the existing wharf, which, as you and I know, was built by Scott Gibson in uh, when was it? 2003? Yeah, no, no, it was uh, 1986 and 7. Or yeah. 7. We, found, we have a whole set of pictures of it. But they've done a structural um, report on the existing structure. I haven't seen that report. I haven't talked to Barney or on that stuff or about that report. Um, but I haven't heard any red flags about the war yet. I did talk to Matt Tupper today. I called Matt Tupper and then I called um, some of the people who live in the neighborhood over there, just to get a uh, of pulse. And um and that said um you know that uh he's prepared whenever this comes up to the Adams Town Council or the planning board to encourage them to support it. But he can't speak on behalf of the town of Yamas because and he's told they bring it up. So that just makes sense. Um and he also said that this had been discussed by the Joint Standing Committee, and he had thought there was going to be a meeting to do that. And I did say that if we were the ones who had dropped the ball um, because they contacted us and we talked about it, and it's never happened. Um, so it's not that he's not aware of it, but I felt it was very important to find to talk to him before we um, actually. Um, if we actually did apply for something, and he, um, uh, you know, he thanked me for that. And um, so I think that, you know, my feeling is if we, you know, if we apply for this and we put it in, we can always withdraw the application. If, uh, as time goes on, people um, have that. You know, if we find that it's something that the community doesn't want, but I can't even imagine having commuters as long as I did going up and down that ramp, that people would not think that this was a good idea. Um, and we are not in ADA compliance right now. We're out of ADA compliance. We're grandfathered, but the only reason we're still in business over there. And the fact that you know how difficult it is for the rescue to take our, um, our stretcher up and for people in wheelchairs. That should be enough to make people um, be supportive of the opportunity of at least trying to do something. 
not to mention the number of people we've seen fall over there. And, and this is going to this sound very light, but and all the paint there shows you how difficult it is to carry things up and down the, uh, the ramp because, you know, somebody's got to in a paint that could have gone down and hit somebody. So, anyway, that, you know, I'm not going to, I don't want to uh, be a dead horse, but um, so, uh, is there anybody in the audience who can marry? I think it's an excellent idea. It's something that should have been done a long time ago. And it's not just elderly people. I remember as a young mom trying to manage pulling groceries up, having a child in my arms. That was extremely difficult at low tide. And um, I see moms now, a baby in a, a car seat, a toddler in a backpack, uh, and trying to get down a steep rail. And just last week, there was one of our seniors who, uh, and this was on the cousin's side on the side, and this is a strong senior because he does a lot, but it was steep, it was getting dark, and I'm going to call correctly about the darkness. Um, he had a suitcase, he had groceries, he got down probably 10 feet, and we couldn't go any further. He couldn't manage the suitcase. And the people were all lined up behind him. And Captain Beth came running down and jumped out of the boat and just went up that ramp and grabbed his suitcase and his groceries so he could get down safely. He could not manage because he could not, he had to hold on to those railings. But he couldn't, he was, he was frozen. And I remember the very first slippery night of. This it was either late fall or winter. The ramp was steep. I was the first person going down. I did not expect it to be slippery. I had uh, grocery bags and I put my first foot down and I realized I was not going to get in there. But Melissa Ames was right behind me. She grabbed my bag, so I could grab onto the ramp. It's terrifying. I do not know how our rescue managed with the. Uh, thank you for the well, I'd just like to uh, kind of testimony and thanks to Charlie Cook. Because if it hadn't been for Charlie, I can tell you a lot of mornings when I went over there to glare ice and he'd been there and he cleaned it off or tried to clean it off and covered it with you know salt and sand and would grab our hands as we came up over the top. Carol? I'm not against the eight foot ramps or anything. I, I think just my perspective that is this film here project, I, I sort of am in Jay's camp where I think it would be better to go forward with a big chunk of change. A big project, not that 350,000 is significant, but I think, you know, the film here is a daunting project financially. And I think we, we have, you know, the potential to get gain more from that. And, I guess the only other thing is I'm working on one right now for SNCC and what King's office told us is because they did get a grant last year for what or this round for some kind of mobile welding up that they, you know, they would consider our grant, but it would be a lower priority than, you know, some new applicant. So that's all I, you know, and that was just under the King's office. I don't know how the other offices feel, but um, I guess what I would want to do is disadvantage a potential application for the stone pier for, you know, multiple million dollars for the sake of the money for an Indian program. That's Well, that's why I asked the question of the people that I asked. Uh, and because of the difference in the magnitude, they said that, that it would be looked at differently. And may have, that may have been Susan Collins' office or Shelly Pickney's office. Yeah, for us, that's just, I think it was... Yeah, it was King's office. We only talked to King's office, which we made to all, but we did, they did tell us that. So you got that same advice to submit to all of them? Yeah, but what they did tell us is, you know, you just got was almost a million bucks last year, and you will, you know, you won't be first in line. It's going to depend on, because they also, as you know, they have certain funds, certain pockets of money that they can access that vary from year to year, and so they have to align the request with the available funds. 
So they don't always know exactly what those are going to be. So, but they did tell us we wouldn't be, you know, it's not like we can't reapply, but it's not like we're going to be. Oh, well, but the million dollars is a lot more money. I know. I'm just saying. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's all. Yep. Yeah. And Jen. Um, I agree with what Carol said, and, and everything that I've read and, and looked at, um, I would, it's not because I don't think that, you know, it's, it's important to um, make Cousins Island safer, but I think this board has to have a focus, and just because there's, you know, money available now and, and this year, um, that we have to come up with something. And that's what I feel like. I mean, this is there's a lot to, to get done in a, a short amount of time. And I'm not saying it's not possible, and I'm not saying that people don't, you know, have it in them to do that. But it's this this isn't a simple project. Um, with all the things on Cousins Island and, and their planning board, and and you know, there's a lot of hoops to jump to to get to this. My feeling is it's much more advantageous for for us to look at the big picture of the stone here and you know how many it, it's going to be we've talked about this you know millions of dollars to to make it safer and to make it um a facility for everyone um and this is the kind of grant opportunity that we get those kind of millions and i don't think that that if we go in with something small and something that can't be put to, it's not ready yet. It's not, it's not even close to being ready. Um, that it's going to make us look bad. And next year, when we have all our ducks in a row, we try to come in with this, and they're going to go, "Oh, look, she did try and do." Just like, just like at the CC. I, I don't think that that's a wise way to look at this. I think we should wait. I think we should. Get everything together and then apply for the, the big people next year. I just want to just I'm just going to say that they said that even they don't give out a lot of those big grants. Most of their grants are little grants like this. They said that because of the particular needs that we have, they would look at that. But if you look at those grants, that most of them are not. Um, Huge grant. And my son is so marketing. At least no one knocked it. Um and you know and maybe the way maybe I most of what grants are not huge grants. Most of these grants that they um give out are not, you know, because I told them the project could be six million dollars. And that's why a lot of the grants are smaller grants, less than a million dollars. I mean, I'm looking at a million, a million three, four million, a million one. I mean, you know, there's, there's four million. Okay, well, whatever you guys want to do. Uh, I'm just saying, I, there, think, there, I, there I, are think, I don't understand why the people I talk to would have suggested and really encouraged us to put in an application. Um, if you don't want to do this, that's fine. But I think it's a missed opportunity because at some point we're going to have to do that project over. And I just, I guess I just don't understand why, from the time we've talked about this, why this has been an issue with this. Well, so just to touch on Jay and Jen talking about. Having something next year ready for the stone here. I think that's a tight dream. We've been talking about the stone here for I don't even know how long. And we finally got a stability study, uh, you know, a few months ago. And that, that to me was one of the essential key notes that we needed to know before we could move ahead on anything. Um, uh, we all know how difficult it is for the town to make one decision. Uh, either it's uh, painting a line on the street or, or uh, you know, the drawing of a shed on the end of the stone pier. It, to me, we got something right now 
that we have that type of drawing. Yes, it will need some more work to come to fruition. Uh, we need to agree with uh, Yarmus, but everything works. The, the whole thing is going to work. The stone pier is going to work. I can't see anything coming close to being uh, written up for a grant for the stone pier as next year. I, I don't see that happening. If, if it does, I'd be highly surprised. But, uh, so uh, I move that we uh, go ahead for the application for calling uh, for the ASIC grant over at the Cousins Island Law or Cousins Island Award. Oh, he's talking about. Oh, okay. Uh, for, well, for any of the congressmen. Yes, it's any congressional of congressional delegates. Correct. Sorry. Is there a second? Oh, yeah, sorry. can you repeat that, please, Paul? Oh, okay. So, a uh, motion to apply for the grant for the congressional office delegation, delegation grant. That is the motion. They both have different names. Uh, for the grant. So if they put a long ramp on the cousin, they didn't want to commit to it. That's my question. Huh? I mean, well, like, the, the reason we haven't well, done it on Shabig first is because well, until we had the stone wharf done, we would have to build something and take it out. So well, I'm going to be done for a while. My legs aren't getting any better. Well, but you still got the problem on both sides, and the difference is the one on Shabig is what is it, 60 feet versus 40 feet? No? No. What is it? It's it's a couple feet different than oh, the really? covenants. Yeah. How come it seems so much cheaper over the yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's cheaper to me. I, maybe you're, you're, it's you're it's that's the last day. step of your trip when you came the groceries up. I don't know, but yeah. but there are there are a couple of feet. Uh, the ramp on the big 42 feet. 42 feet. Yeah. So it's one might be lower, might be lower than the ground. So it's it's really it's really close. <laughs> Um, I, I really would encourage you guys to apply for this. Like, like Donna said, I don't see a lot of downside. There's no telling what the opportunity is going to be next year. Um, Congress decided to just eliminate earmarks at one point. That could happen between now and then. This is available now. This is a project that we've talked about for a while. I think it does benefit the whole community. Um, we can talk about whether we should do it on one side first or the other side first, or but eventually we have to do something. And this is a step in that direction. I think it benefits not, not just people using the ferry, but it, you know, people that, that use their own their own punts and boats to go over there. There, those that the flood is totally inadequate for the amount of people that are trying to tie up over there. And whether it's you know it's really important for the town to address that, I don't know, but that that's a big benefit that would come out of this. Um, I don't see. I don't see downside. Like Mark said, I'm a little bit surprised um, that uh, sea level rise isn't addressed at all in, in the scope of this work. But maybe that's something that could be addressed, you know, further down the road. And, and it's, it's now the cost of any project that we do here that's shared with the Army. But um, I think this is a really good start. And it's a really good project to, um, to apply for with this. So yeah, I would encourage that. Anyone else? No, we'll go for it. I was on the stone committee 40 odd years ago. We're having the same conversation as right now, basically. And nothing has happened since then. So something's got to, somebody's got to kick somebody in the butt and do something. And I think the ramp's a good place to start. And I hope if you do one, you can go both. Because it's a chore for me to get up and down there at the water. And, Matt will attend to that. He helps me half the time. You know, and it's years. My knees are short, to say the best. And I'm getting old. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm getting old. You'll never be able to try it. No matter how hard you try. Yeah, yeah. You were born in 1950, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. And I was born in 51. You, you guys aren't the only ones on the Big Island that are in that predicament of getting old either. Um, and it ends um, like like you had brought up Don with the 
the rescue. I, I've seen some very interesting methods used to, to haul the stretcher up and let the stretcher down um, on, on a ramp. And I, I think the 80 foot ramp is, it seems to be the standard um, that, that uh, facilities are moving towards. And I think that we should be moving towards that. And, and uh, I think that this could be a good practice project for the, the much larger project of the stone, stone war. Um, and if we show as a town that we can we can uh, come up with a project like this, have it funded and complete it. I think that can only be advantageous to uh, us uh, applying for future grants and, and getting other projects going. So it's all, it's all good. It's a good project. Thank you. Speaker? I have a comment and then a question. So my comment is for Bo's comment, um, where everyone is, you know, it, it's evident that the stone here has been in discussion for many years um, but i'm hopeful because we are doing for the first time something that we haven't done before we have a consultant that's going to be coming in that's going to be helping we have four different meetings lined up the first one starting next thursday we have you know surveys then that went out things like that it's progress the um engineering company that we're working with um based on their time frame they said that if we can work together as a community and share our opinions and they can take those suggestions and they can put that in writing based on what dp and our report has already told us we can and cannot do they're hopeful that they can have legitimate project ready drawings for us to submit for projects to start in 2024 so I know that it could be a pipe train, but if we keep the momentum going that we've been going, it is possible. So I'm going to remain hopeful and say that we can at least get an idea of what we want to do and then fight about how we're going to do it. My question is, you said that this is going to entail a lot of work. What kind of work? I mean, it's, I just, my concern is obviously from the office standpoint do we have the capacity in the office to be able to complete this in a short time okay i mean well i'm happy to do what we can but i just want to support me and make sure that we can we can do it and we have you know the capacity to do that if we do that yeah and i would like to second that we are making progress we know even though we have learned, many of us knew it before, the stone walk is not going to fall over. And as long as you don't people to work on it, I have both old work failures. What? Both the times they repair the walk with failures. Right. Because of what they ended up yeah. deciding to do. Right. But the walk itself is stable. And That's so, it's going to stay there. And so that sense of the question that's been out there, every time we Come up with something. Somebody stands up and says, "The water's going to fall over," and then that jumps, then it goes derails it. So hopefully, as we could said, we're trying to be incremental and make progress, and that was the first step. And so we've got that data. All right. Anybody else any questions? Mark. I won't waste much time. I promise. But um, Sutton's Island has always um, amazed me and irritated me. And I was part of a lot of that work that went on 98 to 2000 when the Blanchard lot lease was pretty much up. The Blanchard family told us we were not welcome there anymore. DFC was trying to help out. Yarmouth was in negotiation with Trumbull. Bottom line is we ended up staying right where we are on at the Blanchard parking lot and that's how it ended up. That was very frustrating after all the two years that we put in trying to improve the situation for the people of Shebeg and to make it tolerable for the people of Cousins Island. Um, my point is, I'm not overly tickled that we're looking at putting an 80 foot ramp and a float, bigger float over at Cousins on that wharf that may be affected now by sea level rise, which we weren't talking about in 99, 2000, by the way. And I'm also not very thrilled that the state never addressed the, the flooding problem and the elevation problems at Blanchard Park and Lot. But that's, what, that's where we are right now. 
And I, I, I don't disagree with Jen and Jay. The snow and more should be our main focus for our access point to the mainland from the Big Island. We should work hard as a community to come up with a plan that is somewhat tolerable to all of us. It's not going to be the best plan. I wish the state and the feds would let us deck over or fill in part or all of that code. I don't know that they will. Doesn't sound like they're going to, but we'll get to that discussion. Um, but I, I think we should just go ahead and try to upgrade our facility over there on Cousins Island. I think sometimes, myself included, we lose focus on the fact that our our access to the mainland and our parking, both at Route 1 and Cousins Island, is extremely important to the community. And it's only growing. The need is growing. And the amount of people that are commuting is increasing. And we need to look at mainland access very seriously, almost as seriously as the Stone War, if we're going to have a viable community that's going to keep thriving. We really need to understand that the mainland access point right now, where it is, is almost as important as the Stone War and anything else. Because if we don't have that, where are we going when we get the Stone War? Yeah, it's a free fall, and, and the elevation of the Cousin Island is not much to take in the state. It's just, but, just to see. Yeah, that's no. my point. Is, uh, my point is, we asked the Department of Transportation when we ended up staying at Lynch Parking Lot if they would address that, okay. not even understanding the magnitude that we're now starting to understand with the possibility of the sea level rise. And they basically refuse to do that or take any more property to give us a me me uh, mechanism for expansion of spaces. We tried everything. We no, I'm not. I'm just yeah. making the point that you're absolutely right. At some point, we're going to have to address that side because if we have two feet of sea level rise, yeah. guess what? There's no place to land over there. Yeah, I lost a car there in 1996. It came halfway up into the parking lot. It was a 14 and a half foot side was going through. I'd like to just go back to one thing. This is the plan that has to be in in two weeks, a little less than two weeks. Look at this, and it's very, in my mind, it's very reminiscent of the Collins plans in terms of there's no real plan here. I mean, which one are you going to pick? Uh, You've got so many things that have to, you've got to go through, not the least of which is going to be the Yonah Planning Board right. and a lot of other things. We, we need numbers. Can I finish? Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, this is, it's nowhere near ready. And, and presenting something that goes in on a, uh, I use the word half considered basis, so to speak is going to be worse for us than waiting and presenting a proper whole comprehensive plan as to where we're going to include this as part of all this. Certainly. It's just the other side, the other side, but the stone work has to be the focus. We should be presenting something that has a whole comprehensive plan. It says here we can go forward with this. I'd like to echo what Vika said. We now have the information that the stone work is stable. We know what we can build on it and what we can't build on it. Uh, you know, now we can move ahead because a lot of those questions that always tied us up and kept us from making a decision have been answered. So, you know, I think putting this off for a year and so that we can get our ducks in a row and, and, and present a real plan. Makes a whole lot more sense than, than going off that. And that's where I think this will end up being. Thank you. Yeah, this question is from up there. So, does anybody know the difference in the height of the stone here that comes down the wall? Where the barge, where the ramps are on? I mean, that makes a difference in the fish, too. And the next question was how big a stone do you have to have to put an 80 foot ramp on? 
That, that's part of that. That's part of the proposal. I believe the Cousins Island Wharf is higher than the Stone Wharf, and that's why it's yeah. It's not a just, lot higher. Just, just an observation. When this, the stone wharf has, you know, a couple inches of water and it's been overtopped completely, um, the the water is still just under the decking over a cut, so it, it's a little bit higher. It's not much higher. Yeah, not much higher. Maybe, maybe I, think, I think that maybe makes part of the perception of the difference. No, I I can't read the <laughs> I can't read the size of the flow on the page. Four and five, we've got numbers on the side of the boat. But I will point out, and I don't know that these numbers. 20, 20 by 40. 20 by 50. 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 So that you know, have to have the same size on both sides. It's six, 20 by 50. If you had the same. Yeah, but yeah. the first one's 20 by 60. The side two is. Yeah, it is. 20 by 60, and then the, uh, number three, uh, I guess that is 60. Yeah, they're all 60.4. Uh, yeah, yeah, 20 by 60. So, yeah. And Cumberland has put in a, a, one of these systems over and on, uh, but what do they call that cove over there? Right, right, right. And Long Island's put in something. And I don't know that these numbers are accurate. But on page three, there is a breakdown. It goes right through from mobilization of a construction company, demolition and disposal, sub pier, which is adding on to the end of the war, ADA gangway, which is the ramp, gangway hoist, which is up over the ramp. Twin Dolphin would be the pilings that would hold it. Um, floats. Gangway float, safety railing, hardware, signage, lighting. So there is a budget here. It's three hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars. I'm not saying it's accurate because I have I, I'm not experienced in marine construction, certainly, and I haven't um, gone through this with Baker to find out how to come up with these numbers. And the way things, I will say this about the market right now. Now is one of the worst times to try to get a price on a project if you think it's going to be this amount. That's the danger of any, anything that you have. That's the bailing that completely postponed a boat. They were designed for mostly Peak Island benefit because the price was, I don't know, 30, 40% more than they thought it was going to be. It did end up getting a big grant just recently that was placed in the court at 3.6 million. Give me the waste time. I just want to point out there is a right. No, this is a detail that's not it's not part of it is the actual plan would be incorporated in this to do it. What we need for a grant is the concept and a number. Are these ranch signs that are improving on the stove here? Can they be done before that? What ranch? The so long range we're talking about, the bigger floats. The one at Cousins Island can be independent. Right, we're talking about the one that you pick. Is that tied to I don't, I don't know. Improvement we we talked about in. that because we don't know how high the wall is going to be. That's the thing. <laughs> that we're just starting it. Because like said, I don't think we've come to the meeting for the next four week. We have two in April and two in May, right? And our whole thing starts next Thursday. Yeah, and we're hoping that we get input from people because. As people have said, if we can move, we're moving forward. I mean, when, after we decided, the community decided they wanted to go to the Stone Wharf, the first thing I did was encourage the board to get a stability study because that was always the area where people are, you know, where things would fall apart. So we, that's what we did. And, and we've been trying to be systematic along the way. But um, but my feeling about the 80 foot ramp is we just we've got we've got numbers all over the place and we're trying to deal with FEMA who thinks the wall should be 20 feet high, which is ridiculous, totally ridiculous. But we're going to have to spend lots of money to change the feet to convince the FEMA that that's not true. I mean, it's it's really complicated when you get into it. So what's the height of the stump here right now? The well, end of it's eight feet, isn't it? No. 
Isn't that what you said? Age of elevation? Elevation of age. Yeah, elevation of age. I don't know what that means. We don't know what that means, but where we can see the tide that keeps it underwater. No, no. But I think that that's why they have to. That's why you guys we have to dispute the FEMA. Does that eight feet the FEMA number? No, twenty is the FEMA number. But that's where. No, no. What they're talking about is where sea level rise. It's something about. I I think we're. Oh, going off the handle here. I think we need to decide about this right now, and uh, we have a motion, and I think we need to vote. And uh, yay or nay, I mean, yeah. And and then you know. So you the question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. All right. Do we need to have a motion to accept the question, or I'm just going to call for a vote? All right. All in favor of the plan for this grant? All opposed? So, um, what we'll try to do is see if we can get the first one in by next Friday. Do we want an agenda item to talk about this again? Or, I mean, basically, we just got a motion. What was your motion, uh, Bo, to actually find on the ground? So, you've already made your motion. Yeah. That was what I was thinking would happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. No. Take that up. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, just so everybody knows, I plan to have a candid conversation with Barney Baker about his breakdown of his numbers and um, see if he believes or has had any conversation physically lately with any marine contractors to see if this, these numbers are adequate before we put in for grants. Yeah. Because we don't want to find out it's going to be 600,000 right. or 500,000 or 400,000. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he's going to be able to answer the question. Like I said, it's a tough market right now. Croc Marine didn't even bid on the dredging up here. They're so busy. I was talking to the owner of the company the other day. And uh, people right now are stretched out. The prices are not going down. So I'm just going to check in with it just so everybody knows. So if anybody's got a problem with it, say it now. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, no, no, you guys okay with Mark talking to Brian Baker? Yeah, I asked him uh, how he's coming with the Indiana uh, budget. Okay. That's going to be on next week's agenda. Probably about as well. What coming on the Sun Warfare? Uh, I think I think if we don't have anything by next meeting for the Sun War Pro, I think we need to get that deadline. Yeah, I, I, it's getting ridiculous. I, I agree. I, I understand that um, you know somebody was ill at one point, and then I guess somebody has left, but. That's really not a difficult design for an engineer in town. Widening the road and designing some diagonal parking and drainage. Really not that difficult. They did, I will say, they did have the work pretty much finalized, but I think in the transition of Justin Levin, me coming in, that really delayed things by probably four or five months. Yeah. Uh, and then what had happened is with me bringing up on where he left off and where I need to begin, I found that, you know, the motion for you guys to discuss change in the parking. So that delayed him even more. Um, and then the last month, unexpected and the person was in. So um, yeah. hopefully I did email the person, the new person today, asking them, you know, that uh, hopefully we can get something sooner than later because I did say we've been anxiously waiting for it, so I'm hopeful that we'll hear back. Who's the new person? I don't think I put him on the spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't remember. I'll tell you once I talk to him a couple times. Yeah. Okay. And I do agree that if we can get a design for the Stone Warfare, I and mean, then we start, if we can get serious as a community about trying to come to some design consensus with the Stone Warfare. Combining that along with continuing our discussion with the golf course, however that comes out, 
makes a whole lot of sense. So I'm going to now together. Mary, do we know how high the north is going to be? No, that's this, that's so part of the discussion. We know that relative to the design of the north road, because if our north is going to be high, mm -hmm. then obviously we can't, unless we're going to have like a drive through that the golf cart can go through. But we're going to have to raise the road. The engineers have um, taken that. They, we've asked uh, Jason from uh, right, right, yes. right, here, um, right here. Right um, here. And they don't think that's going to be a major problem. That they'll be able to tie me to wherever the road is. But we are thinking about that. Somewhat's not going to come up to eight feet. It's not going to come up to six feet. Not going to come up five feet, so, you know, I, I don't know if the community will really pick stone like that, but the numbers we're hearing are three to four feet possibly. I think I'm going to lose my father side of the storm before. <laughs> Just one comment. If it co goes up four feet, yeah, the 80 foot ramp isn't as beneficial. <laughs> As you visualize it right now. That's why that's one so, reason why we didn't look at the show offer. Okay, you know we're part of the golf course then anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. so um I don't think this is a discussion yeah. of yeah. one yeah. but this yeah. with this kind of project um possibly uh, being in the wings, I would encourage the the select board to get back with um with the town council in Yarmouth and the Zoom meeting, the joint standing committee. Yeah, and that's what I when I communicated with uh, uh, Matt Hunter today. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even had something. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. um, so when I talked to him today, that was you know we brought we brought that up, and you know it has been discussed with them. The other. Um, uh, stakeholders with this particular project will be the Harbor Committee, the Harbor Master, as well as you know whatever permit is to get the planning board. Right. So the Harbor Master has called me once a year to ask how this, you know, what what's happening with this project. You know, where, where is the township big on this? I know because it's been we've been talking about it for years. You know, I mean, some people think we just made it up last week. Um, and if somebody actually say, well, nobody's ever talked about it. So, you know, this has been a huge, you know, it's been numerous discussions about it. So that, that open, I, I think that that open communication between the town of Shibay and the town of Norman is really important. That joint team committee ought to be active. Well, one thing too that uh, in this proposal that Ryan Baker put forward, it's um, outreach to Yana is part of it. Similar to the kinds of things that we're doing with the Stone Wall that they've done in other kinds of projects where you have somebody, you know, to try to help people understand what the project is before they decide that they don't want the project. And that's why I reached out to some people over in Cousin Island today, just to um, I think, you know, just give them an idea that that uh, this is a possibility. Have a good night. Good night. Good night all.